you, Gerawa, my brother, I've got to confess. As my sibling, I believe I can tell you anything. You have never betrayed me and I trust that you never will. What is it this time, Akeke? I hope you are not in trouble again. I've done some things, things that I'm not proud of. What now? Akeke, more lies, more deceit. No, brother, this time it's different. I've been living a double life, indulging in pleasures that I thought would fulfill me, but they've only left me empty and broken. How could you? Akeke, you promised to be better, to do right by your family. And yet, here we are. I know, I know, but I've lost everything now. My wealth, my status, even my health may be at risk. What do you mean? What have you done? I've been reckless, Mugerawa. I've been with countless women, unprotected. I fear I may have contracted something from either or one of the others. You selfish fool. You put yourself and others at risk with your careless actions. And now you want to drag Namara into this. No, no, I can't let her get tested. What if she's been unfaithful too? I can't bear the thought of it. Enough. Akeke, okay, you will face this head on. You will get tested, and you will own up to your mistakes. No more lies, no more excuses. But what about Namara? What if she leaves me? Now that she's making money, I can't risk losing her. She makes enough to take care of the family and send the kids to school. She provides for all of my needs, I need her now more than ever. If she truly loves you, she'll stand by your side. But you have to be honest with her, with yourself. It's time to change, Okeke, before it's too late. The tension hangs thick in the air as Okek grapples with the reality of his actions, and the weight of his brother's words sinks in. The next day. Well, well, look who's back for more advice. What's the trouble this time, OKK? It's Namara, she wants us to go to the clinic for testing. I can't let her find out about my affairs, my lies. You know that the doctor or nurse will ask me to tell the truth, and I can't risk Namara knowing how many women I've cheated on her with. Man, we talking hundreds. She'll go on and on about soul ties, diseases and viruses. I don't want to go there. Please help me my longtime friends and partners in crime, Kasuja and Wamala. Ha, huh, what's the big deal? Okay, okay, just go get tested and be done with it. No, no, I can't risk it, Wamala. I need your help. I need a way out of this mess. Ah, I see. Well, lucky for you, we're experts in getting out of tight spots. Yeah, we'll help you out, but it's gonna cost you. We're old friends, but there are no friends in business. Anything, just tell me what to do. Kasuja, have you thought of something? Here's the plan. Create a scene at home, argue with Namara over something trivial. Tell her you won't go to the clinic because you're angry. Brilliant. And if that doesn't work, fake a severe stomach ache on the way to the clinic. That'll buy us some time. In the meantime, Wamala and I will come up with a plan C. Just send us a message confirming your clinic's appointment the date and time. Tell us the route you'll take. You must refuse to board public transport, instead opt to walk to the clinic using the shortcut that passes through the forest. Walk to the clinic. Fine, I trust you man. Brilliant, but what about the test results? Namara knows the nurses at the clinic. She'll find out if I never got tested. Don't worry about that. We've got it covered. We'll get our hands on some clinic templates and a stamp to produce false health reports. Brilliant. Namara and the village elders will not force me to do something that I don't want to do. It's my body and they can't force me to get tested. I prefer to live in ignorance. You're the man. Yeah, and I've got a thing going with one of the nurses there. She'll cover up for you. Perfect. This just might work. Of course it will, okay, okay. With us on your side, you've got nothing to worry about. The trio exchange sinister smiles as they finalize their devious plan, oblivious to the consequences of their actions. I can't believe you, Namara. Always trying to control everything, acting like you're the boss around here. I'm not taking any of your nonsense, Akeke. Okay, okay. We made a promise to get tested together, and we're going to do it. Oh, is that so? Well, I've had enough of your orders. I won't be going to the clinic with you today, I'm too angry with you. You don't get to decide that, Akeke. 
This is about our health, our future. If you refuse to go, I'll involve the village elders. Stop acting like you're in charge. I'm the man of this house, I'll decide when we go for testing. Ekeke, you watched me as I called the clinic to make an appointment. You know how hard it is to get an appointment at the village clinic. I don't care, I'm going nowhere with you. You better cancel that appointment. No way, it seems there's something you're afraid of. It's my body and it's my life that's at risk here and I won't risk my health for anything. As the tension escalates, Namari reaches for her phone and dials a number, speaking firmly into the receiver. Mother Nakakand, please come over. Akeke is refusing to go for testing, and I need your help. Give me that phone. How dare you report me to my mother? I'm done playing games with you, Akeke. You must learn to keep your promises. Nakakand arrives swiftly. Her presence commanding attention as she enters the room. What's this I hear? Okay, oh, Kay. You think you can just ignore your wife's health? Do you want to put Namara at risk? It's not like that, Mother Nakakand. I've changed. I've been faithful to Namara. Actions speak louder than words. Okay, Kay. If you're truly changed, then prove it. Get tested with Namara. Fine, I'll do it. But I won't be bullied into it by Namara. She has no right to tell me what to do. You'll do it because it's the right thing to do, okay, Kay. Now, stop your foolishness and go to the clinic with Namara. Or I'll have no choice but to involve the village council. With a reluctant sigh, Okek begrudgingly acquiesces, knowing he has no other choice but to comply with his mother's demands. The scene unfolds on a secluded path leading to the village clinic, with Okek and Namara walking side by side, tension still lingering between them. Namara, I, I think I'm feeling really sick all of a sudden. My stomach, it hurts so bad. Oh no, Akeke, we should hurry to the clinic then. It sounds serious. Before they can take another step, two shadowy figures emerge from the bushes, startling them both. Hand over your valuables, now. Namara, run. I'll hold them off. Don't let them hurt you. Woman, you have nowhere to run. Namara hesitates for a moment, tricks the robber before she takes off running back the way they came, her heart pounding with fear. Looks like we've got ourselves a scared little rabbit. How dare you push me, woman? I will show you what I'm made of. There's a huge snake behind you. What? I am afraid of snakes. As Namara disappears from view, Okek lets out a dramatic groan, pretending to be injured. Ah, ah, I'm hurt. Namara, go get help. Don't worry about me, just run. I am going back to the village to seek help. Ah, your wife ran away. I'm afraid you won't be so lucky. Run Namara, run, don't look back. I'll fight off these thugs. Once Namara is out of sight, Okek's pained expression turns into a smirk as his two friends emerge from the trees, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> well played, OKK. She fell for it hook, line, and sinker. How dare she tries to force me to get tested. Plan C has been executed. The robbers played their role well. Remember that you'll have to pay them as agreed. Yeah, yeah, I got some money from Namara's bag when she wasn't looking. She'll think she got robbed. So in essence, Namara's money will be used to pay the robbers we hired to rob her. <laughs> the two of you better leave before Namara and the villagers get here. Kasuja, let's go. Our work is done here. As Namara returns to the scene, breathless and worried, Okek lies on the ground, pretending to be injured. Ah, I am in so much pain. Akeke, what happened? Are you alright? I fought them off, Namara. They ran away, but they got in a few good hits. I'm going to need some bed rest for a while. Oh no, we had an appointment at the clinic. 
What are we going to do now? Don't worry about me, Namara. You go to the clinic alone. I'll get tested once I've recovered from these bruises. Namara reluctantly agrees, and with the help of concerned villagers who have gathered, they escort Okek back home, vowing to track down the thieves who attacked him. Don't worry Namara, we'll drop you off at the clinic and take OKK home. Maybe the nurses will prescribe some painkillers for him. Meanwhile, the young men will search this entire forest for those scoundrels. Namara sits in the clinic's examination room, waiting anxiously as the nurse reviews her medical history and prepares for her tests. Namara, I must say, I admire your determination to get tested regularly. It's so important for your health and well-being. Thank you, Nurse Kawumulo. I just want to make sure that Akeke and I are both healthy and safe. That's wise, especially considering the risk of contracting diseases. You mentioned Okeke used to get tested regularly in Palavi. Yes. He did, but things are different now. He's been reluctant to come to the clinic. I understand, but it's crucial for both of you to get tested, especially given your concerns. I recommend you bring Okeke in for testing once he's recovered from his injuries. I will, nurse. He'll come to the clinic. I can't shake the feeling that the robbery was staged, nurse. Especially after Akeke's reluctance to come here. That does sound suspicious, Namara. Nurse, if Akeke gets tested, could you let me know the results? I'm worried he may not be truthful about his health. I'm sorry, Namara, but patient confidentiality. But what if he's hiding something? What if he falsified his medical records in Palavi? I can't risk my health like this. The nurse's brow furrows with concern as she grapples with the ethical dilemma. I understand your concern, Namara. I'll find a way to ensure both your safety and uphold patient confidentiality. Marriage carries inherent risks, with much at stake. Looking back, I regret not adhering to godly principles when selecting a life partner. There is always an opportunity to correct your mistakes. Seek guidance through prayer and ask the Lord to lead you. Yes. Thank you, sister. I will collect my test results tomorrow. Unfortunately, I won't be able to wait at reception as I need to hurry home to attend to my husband. As Namara leaves the clinic with a heavy heart, the nurse contemplates how to confront Okek and compel him to be truthful with his wife, knowing the stakes are too high to ignore. Thank you for watching this episode of Namara. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we invite you to do so. Subscribing ensures that you'll be notified whenever we release new content. Also, we'd appreciate it if you'd like and share our content. Thank you for your support. In reflecting on the tumultuous events that have unfolded, it becomes clear that Okek's life has been a series of misguided choices and deceitful actions. His reluctance to face the consequences of his behavior, particularly regarding his infidelity and refusal to undergo testing, only exacerbates the situation. Despite the counsel of his brother, who implores him to confront his past and embrace change, Okek persists in his deceptive ways, influenced by his morally bankrupt friends. Namara, on the other hand, emerges as a beacon of integrity and strength amidst the chaos. Her commitment to her family's well-being, coupled with her unwavering resolve to seek truth and accountability, serves as a stark contrast to Okek's duplicitous nature. Despite the challenges she faces, Namara remains steadfast in her determination to uphold her values and protect her loved ones. The nurse's dilemma highlights the ethical quandary at the heart of the situation. Faced with conflicting loyalties and the potential consequences of her actions, she grapples with the responsibility to uphold patient confidentiality while also safeguarding Namara's health. Her decision to create a scenario that compels Okek to confront the truth underscores the importance of integrity and transparency in matters of personal and public health. Ultimately, the events serve as a cautionary tale about the dangers of deception and the importance of honesty and accountability in relationships. Okek's refusal to confront his past not only jeopardizes his own well-being, but also puts Namara at risk. In contrast, Namara's unwavering commitment to truth and integrity paves the way for healing and resolution, offering a glimmer of hope amidst the turmoil. As the narrative concludes, the lessons learned are clear. Honesty, integrity, and humility are essential virtues in navigating the complexities of life and love.
before we conclude, we would like to share the following verses with you. Kindly note that the verses were taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Proverbs 12.22 says, Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Proverbs 11.3 says, The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Ephesians 4.25 says, Where for putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Psalm 118, 8 says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Luke 8, 17 says, For nothing is secret, that shall not be made manifest. Neither anything hid, that shall not be known and come abroad. Proverbs 26, 27 says, Whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. Galatians 6, 7 says, be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. James 5.16 says, Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And John 8.32 says, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you humbly, acknowledging your sovereignty and wisdom. As we reflect on the events that have transpired, we recognize the importance of honesty, integrity, and accountability in our lives. We ask for your guidance and strength to uphold these virtues in all our dealings and relationships. Forgive us for any instances of deceit or dishonesty, and grant us the courage to confront our shortcomings with humility and repentance. Help us to walk in the light of your truth, knowing that it alone sets us free from the bondage of sin and deception. Grant wisdom to those who are facing difficult decisions, that they may seek your will and follow the path of righteousness. Give them discernment to recognize the consequences of their actions and the grace to make amends where necessary. We pray for healing and restoration in relationships that have been strained or broken by deceit. May your love and forgiveness abound, bringing reconciliation and peace where there is discord and turmoil. Finally, Lord, we commit our futures into your hands, trusting in your faithfulness and provision. Help us to live with integrity and sincerity, honoring you in all that we do. In Jesus' name, we pray, Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.